Our reading today is from First uh, Chronicles chapter 22, um, and uh, then I'll uh, jump over to uh, Second Timothy. Well, God had given him the division. Uh, he had, you know, won and conquered many wars, and uh, just when he was about to build, God says, "No, uh, it's not you." He had the vision, but uh, it was his son, Solomon, that God had chosen to fulfill the vision, to, to, to build the vision. And um, I, I'm sure it was a, a little bit of disappointment for, for David, but uh, uh, because he had, he had fought and conquered, and now he's having to kind of, uh, you know, uh, leave it to his son to, to build up. But uh, he obeyed the Lord. And he made the preparation. He prepared his son to, for success. Is really what I want to focus on. Uh, David had the vision to build a house for God, but it was his son uh, whom God chose. So instead of sulking, instead of being, being upset, he actually went and prepared everything that was needed for his son to succeed. And uh, isn't that... Uh, what parents are about. You know, we, um, we have a vision uh, for uh, our posterity. We have a vision for our children. And uh, our job is to prepare them for success. Our job is to sacrifice. Our job is to fight and to set the platform and uh, to prepare them to succeed in life. And that was, that was what, uh, what David did. Everything you see here he prepared, he prepared. His son Solomon uh, was inexperienced. And, um, you know, we have to, you know, um, you know, I'm sure Solomon, we know by the book of Proverbs, uh, Solomon was smart. But, you know, there's one, there's a difference between being smart and being experienced, right? You could be smart in college, in university, but be inexperienced in applying that in life. We can be smart in knowing all the Bible scriptures and and uh, memorizing the the the, the, Bible, the the books of the Bible and and knowing all the uh, the sixteen fundamentals of faith, but be inexperienced in knowing how to build a church or how to uh, minister in the pulpit or you know just to deal with conflicts of leadership. And I find that many times it's not that we it's not that we are. Um, you know, we're not, you know, smart enough for uh, effective <laughs> ministry. It's that we're inexperienced in how to apply the wisdom, uh, apply the, the knowledge that we have with wisdom. And thank God for David's. Thank God for, you know, the you know, spiritual fathers like Paul was to Timothy, uh, who helped to prepare the, the Timothys the Solomons for success. Now, um, all Solomon had to do, right, he had everything laid out. He had all the provisions, financial provisions. He had the leaders. He had, you know, the plan, the vision. Everything was laid out. All he had to do was to seek the Lord and to obey the commandments. And he, he messed it up, you know. He messed it up. And so... When I when I was um, elected to be the, to to succeed Pastor Sapp, and I I had this moment of looking at the history of First the Seven of God, and I saw the Vincents, the Surgeons, the Sassers, the Saps, and in the span of almost sixty years, we just had five pastors, and here I was given the task to build the, the to take the church into a new season uh, and to build the vision. My prayer was God. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I said, please help me to not mess up. You know, when you have a, when you have a, 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 a just a short span, of, I mean, a, a, you know, uh, maybe five pastors um, before you, uh, I didn't want to celebrate, say, the 75th anniversary and then have this black spot, you know, in, in, during my era. And that was my, my concern. And Solomon, you know, he just had that one thing to do, and he, he messed it up. You know, he, he disobeys. Unfortunately, uh, that's that one thing that's going to, uh, you know, just always 
be a part of his his uh, you know history, and um, but David did everything in his power to prepare, and that's our responsibility. So our responsibility is to prepare uh, the next generation. Um, if you look at Paul, I share this. Uh, uh, I kind of use this as a uh, foundation for my Mother's Day message, and uh, Paul had a vision uh, to plant churches. But it was Timothy, his spiritual son, whom he chose to help build the church, right? So he went out there planting, but he had a Timothy. Just as David had a son, Paul had a son. And all of us need sons and daughters, right? Because uh, we, we're just one generation away, right, from extinction, if, if you want to put it that way. If we don't, if we don't re, uh, raise up successors... Our vision will die with us. Our vision will pretty much disappear when we disappear. So when we, when we, uh, uh, it's you know, uh, have a vision, we should always be you know praying that God would give us Timothys and and um, spiritual daughters to help us to carry out the vision. Um, that really hit me, uh, you know, hit home to me when I reached fifty. By the way, I'm more than that now. <laughs> that was a few years ago. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm 50 years old, and I've spent a lot of my energy, you know, getting the vision, building the vision to where it is. And whoever succeeds me in one year can dismantle the vision. Can just, and I, and I said, Lord, uh, that would be a waste. Um, because I believe uh, whoever leadership should al whoever succeeds in leadership should always build upon, and, you know, and take the vision to the next level. And that was my, when I came in, I, I knew what was in the heart of Pastor Sap. I heard him talk about he called it saddle he called <clears throat> it satellites, uh, but because he was he he uh, uh, you know was trying to you know, uh, replicate what VFC was doing back then and doing regionalize. And so I heard him talk about satellites and churches. And so I said, but he could, it was interesting. He, he was a great preacher. He was a great evangelist. But it wasn't his season to take the church into multi-site. It was just, it was just not in him. And so when I came on, I, my prayer was, God, what, what will my era add to the history of this church? It's not my church, it's God's church. And as I prayed, that's when God began to give me the, the vision of one church in six locations, planting churches. And so that's been, that's been you know, uh, my mission. And um, so when I hit 50, I thought, Lord... Um, what is what is your, you know, um, succession? What is the succession plan you want me to have? Because um, whoever comes in after me, um, if if it's not if the if the preparation is uh, the succession plan is not in place, then the vision <clears throat> that took all these years can in one to two years be dismantled. And I've seen this happen. Uh, overseeing the district, uh, a, a young zealous pastor would come in and total disregard for the old, for for the previous pastor and what they did. Total disregard, thinking that he's so smart, thinking that you know we're really going to make things happen, and and just trampling over the traditions and trampling over the processes and uh, the the uh, whatever vision was in the past. Almost as if setting himself up as, you know, well, I'm going to show you guys what I could do now, and we, were, and that was, that was, uh, the beginning of his downfall. And because what happens is that you just go in and like a wrecking ball, you destroy everything, and lose respect, you lose your credibility, and and then you have all these unintended consequences. And I see this happen so many times, and. And if I could give advice to young pastors coming in with into a church with history, you know, that you 
you honor the past as you move forward into the future. Don't disrespect the past. Don't say things like, well, you know what, if you don't like it, you can just find another church. I guarantee you they're going to find another <laughs> church. <laughs> they're going to, they're gonna, uh, you know, all your, you know, the people that you, uh, that you need will, will leave. And when I came in, um, you know, I remember the sacrifices of the so-called old-timers made to build this church. I remember the blood, sweat, and tears. I was there. And um, I remember the sacrifices they made. I remember, you know, how they, they uh, our attendance may have dropped, but their giving increased. And uh, I remember breaking ground. I remember setting up breaking down. And so being a son in the faith, do you think I would say, well, you know, those of you that are left here, if you don't like it, you can just leave. Hello, you know, they, they were the ones, they, they are the reason we are here, right? The rest right. left the church. The left jumped off ship, right? When the, and, um, but these were the ones that what hung in there. Even if, if uh, they were slow in adopting new changes, um, so what? You know, you just have to deal with it. And you have to work with them, <coughs> and you let them choose to to okay, uh, well, my time is up, and then you can put in new leaders. And so, um, the, when when I took over, it took a little longer to to implement the vision. Why? Because there were a lot of old timers in place, and and there are times when they're frustrated, and you know they they you know maybe resisted the change. But the Lord gave me gave me a word. He says, "Don't worry, son. You're gonna outlive them." <laughs> I was young, right? <laughs> and they were older. So you just you just hang in there. And sure enough, a few years go by, and then they get they they get old and they retire. That's it's better than you know removing them and then getting people offended because they're a little slow, and, and then now you have to deal with. So it's all, all part of preparation and all a part of, of raising up the next leadership. And um, so notice here, in, if you open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and uh, I'll call, call, kind of close with this. Um, uh, it says, Paul, an apostle of, of the Lord of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of of life which is in Christ Jesus to Timothy my beloved son right and then he says um, grace mercy and peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did uh, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day uh, it says greatly desiring to see you be mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy when I recall, when I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and am persuaded is in you also. And uh, so here, Paul refers to him as a beloved son. We know that not biological, but spiritual son. But what he notices is that is that there's a genuineness of his faith, and um, there's a quality of character that is within Timothy. And um, you have to know that in, in Acts chapter 16, Timothy, um, when, when Paul came to Lystra, probably, was, well, not probably, was a convert, was saved under, the, uh, under his ministry. So uh, maybe he was Lois and then, and Eunice that came, and um, they all came as a family, except Timothy's dad, who's a Greek. And so uh, they got introduced to the gospel, and Paul went on. And but you know, it was it was the grandmother, and it was it was Eunice that took this young convert, this young child, because you read in in Second Timothy chapter three, verse fourteen, you know um, how he says. Uh, but you must continue in the things which you have 
learned and been assured.